Okay, we're going to start the inventor section off with how to create an asset from an inventor file. For the inventor section, pretty much everything we'll be doing is in the inventor professional application itself. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that application. Once this application finishes loading, I'm going to now start working within the factory tools. And the primary thing you will be doing with an inventor for factory design purposes is to create and modify and manage your assets. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to my factory tab within inventor. And then I'm going to choose the create asset menu. Create Asset has a number of options available. You can start by modeling a part. You can model an assembly. You can import DWG solids. And you can do the same thing through using the Vault application. You can also import a model and import a model from Vault. We're going to choose Import Model. Now, you have the ability when the import model comes up to choose things other than the inventor model files. However, for this, I'm utilizing an inventor part that represents a bench. So I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna hit okay. This is gonna give me a warning that the location of this file is not within my active project. My project scope is where all of my working files are defined. However, for demonstration purposes and because I'm bringing in an asset that I have not utilized yet, I am going to bring it in from essentially an outside location. This message is warning me that that outside location is not within the scope of the project file. For this purpose, I am fine with that. So I'm going to choose yes. However, if you receive this message and you're not expecting it, you can hit no, you can close this, and you can look into your active project. Mine is this factory design project, and all of my files should essentially exist where this factory design IPJ, inventor project file, is located. So any file or any folders or files that exist below this designs factory folder is where I would expect to be opening files. We'll flip back over and do import model again. I'm going to choose bench. I'm going to hit open. And again, this time I'm going to say yes. And I'll show you in just a moment why it is okay that I said yes to this. So once this finishes loading, I am essentially going to publish this asset. Real quick, I have some key parameters that have been defined for this asset. These can be specified as you desire for each one of your assets and they are properties that then become searchable. For this one, I'm going to choose to publish, and it's going to warn me that this needs to be saved and ask if I want to save it now. I'm going to say yes, and it does a quick save on it. I am going to choose to publish this to my vault as opposed to locally. I'm going to get a vault login dialog, which I'm going to okay. And then I have two locations within my vault where I'm going to store factory related information. One is within the asset folder and one is within the layout folder. This is an asset, so we're going to use the asset directory. And from there, we can go ahead and hit OK to publish. Just to explore some of the additional options available, you have the ability to simplify on demand and it will have parameters to specify either coarse or medium, or you can have custom parameters for simplification. We're not going to do that at the moment. And you also have the ability to specify whether you want to publish a 2D asset or not. 
the 2D asset is what the AutoCAD architecture application will utilize during layouts. Flipping back to the general tab, we'll go ahead and hit OK, and this will go through a publication process. Once that has been published successfully, we'll then have within our Vault Professional application an asset available. So if I flip over to this and look for Bench, I should hopefully see something within Vault. I do. And this is my bench asset from factory. I'm then able to utilize this asset within layouts. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the asset builder and we'll pick back up with creating an asset from a third party file, which you'll find is very similar.